Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome back. Um, it's been a while, guys. Yeah, we're back. We actually just um, have been sitting here for about an hour just <laughs> talking to each other. Like, it's been too long. Like, mm-hmm. we don't live close to each other. You know, we gotta, we literally made this podcast to talk to each other. Like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> funny but also i was just thinking as i was singing the intro song like when did that become a thing like how i understand i just sing things like all the time but like Mm -hmm. is that how like it just really became a thing right like i um yeah every time when you say it i'm just like i can't believe we say this every week (laughs) it's just funny honestly i like it because like we might have new listeners you know like they might not know who or what or when we are so yeah exactly exactly helpful um, and like if you do listen to every episode you're like okay we get it <laughs> like i could say it in my sleep mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> love it. um there's some people out there that like it they expect it i mean personally i love it so mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so. um but guys happy freaking december merry christmas happy hanukkah happy kwanzaa all the holidays i'm sure i missed a couple mm-hmm. but yeah, it's it just it's holiday season december mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> Um, I'm a Grinch, personally. <laughs> See, I I like this time of year. Like, I I mean, my favorite time of year is summer. Mm-hmm. But if yeah. it has to be cold outside, then, like, having a little, all the lights and the festivities is nice. You know? Yeah, I mean, I would agree. Have you decorated for Christmas? Yes, I have. <sighs> I have um, not, but I plan I, on doing it tomorrow. Yeah, I have um, some snowflake lights on my porch, and we put up our tree. Um, Mm -hmm. We've got a real tree. (gasps) Does it smell amazing? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm not getting a real tree. I have a fake one. Oh, yeah. Well, um, there's already pine needles everywhere. Yeah, (laughs) always. Um, And so, like, when you get a real tree, you, like, trim some of the branches off of the bottom yeah um my dad helped me do that and i took those and i made a garland oh oh yeah. that is so cute i want to mm-hmm. see a picture okay <laughs> i'll show you one but um so yeah i have like a real garland and a real tree so it's really so bougie we love that yeah <laughs> love that i'm not gonna have any of that but i'm gonna at least put a tree up and i did get um rick and morty um what are they called? Ornaments. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> love that. They're cute. <laughs> love that. <laughs> um, okay. I have to mention, um, so my mom actually sent me this article about the Philadelphia Zoo. Oh. Um, yes. So a little bit of an update to my zoo story. Um she sent this article and like a video from 6abc and it was posted october 17th so like not too long ago uh and it was somebody talking about the solitude the the haunted building um that i actually talked about in um in one of our episodes so if you want to go back and listen to episode 37 for the full story um but yeah, they talk about the ghosts encounters um, and like full body apparitions and lights turning on and off and stuff. Oh, so that will also be linked below. Yeah. So. Okay, I definitely want to check that out. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds cool. Sounds very yeah. interesting. <clears throat> um, I we talked about it before when we were just talking. Um, my goal, one of my little resolutions for the new year, is to go to Philadelphia. And go to the Philadelphia Zoo. <laughs> so, <Good. laughs> I've never been to Philly in my whole life, and I think that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's a great place. I yeah. mean, it's got good and bad, obviously, but like it's yeah. I need to go up there. I need to. Mm-hmm. So, expect that in 2023. I'm speaking it into existence, so I make <laughs> sure that it happens. Like I have to hold myself accountable here. Okay. Yeah. So you heard it here <laughs> first, folks. Okay. All right, yeah, we'll we'll put that on the to to do list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> let me scream for Juju across the state. Juju, write that down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I also wanted to mention that um, we have stickers now. Oh my gosh, guys, 
we not only have stickers. I mean, we've had stickers, but we have upgraded the stickers to literally the coolest stickers I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Like, are we going to tell them what they look like? Yeah, they're, um, they're holographic. If, okay. Hollow freaking graphic, guys. That's my favorite color. That's not even a color. I it's don't even all know. the colors. <laughs> all of them. Every single one of them. Ugh, they are so cool. I don't even have one, like, physically yet, but obviously I've seen them, and I just cannot wait to put it put one on my car. Mm-hmm. I know. I put one on my laptop. Love that. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to mention if um, if you want a sticker, just email us, and I'll I'll send you a sticker. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to send me where, like, where it's going to be sent. So, like, yeah. send me an address or something. But I will send you a sticker mm-hmm. for free. For the free ski. So, if you want a sticker, hit us up. Yeah, They're really cool, for real. I'm not even kidding. Mm-hmm. It's okay if you guys don't even take any, because I'll take them all for myself. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> I'll share. I'll share. Yeah. <laughs> um, Love that. Okay. But that's that's the only other thing I had to mention. Do you have anything else? Um, I was just going to say to please go rate and review us on um apple podcast and spotify but yes oh and we just had our spotify wrapped oh my gosh the spotify wrapped oh yes it came out guys my my little heart could not even take it Mm -hmm. like i think if i'm remembering like the second like obviously the first most listened country was the united states and then the second one mexico was mexico shout out guys i did not even know this like shout out hello like we have listeners in mexico I really didn't even know. Yeah, I think and it's, it's like our US. second most listened to. Like, hi mm-hmm. guys, Mexico, Belgium, yeah. New Zealand, and and Qatar. Qatar. Like, oh, yeah. are we kidding? That's the coolest thing ever. Hi, everybody. Yes. Um, that's amazing, and we love you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, other than that, I don't really have anything else to talk about as an intro topic, anyway. Okay, well, then we can get right on into it. So, um, this week I have for you a, a bit of a mystery. Oh, we know how I love and hate those. I was, well, I was going to say it might have, um, some sort of a, a conclusion. Okay. Perfect. Like, uh. That's exactly what I like to hear. Yeah. So we, we might know the, you know. It could it might be, not a, be a, this might be an episode of solved mysteries. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, not yet, but you'll you'll see. Okay. So, I'm going to be talking about the tomb of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. That is so cool. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited right now. So, do you know anything about Cleopatra really? Um Okay, yes, but I I won't tell you what I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I sort of did before I did this research, but, like, I learned a lot more about her. Mm-hmm. See, what's um, interesting is that that was actually on my list of things to do. So, like, I had looked up some of this stuff before, but I'm oh, so excited. I'm sorry. I no, it's stole okay. It up. I stole it's it okay. You. you stole my thunder. It's all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, so Cleopatra and Mark Antony, who was her her husband, mm-hmm. um, they were buried together in... Um, Alexandria, Egypt, in 30 BC. Wow. So, listen, I know we say old every single week, but like 30 (laughs) BC is like pretty old. I know. Yeah. And also, the years in BC, like reading about this stuff was kind of confusing because I didn't realize like it goes backwards. Yeah, it goes backwards. Make it make sense. Why why would they ever do that? (laughs) Because I think it's because like one BC. And then, I mean, it makes sense. It's like a on a scale, I guess. But like, yeah, it goes backwards. <laughs> it's crazy, and, but yeah. Yeah. Somebody out there is like, "What are you even talking about? Like, yeah, <laughs> we're not explaining it well. We're enough, not, but, guys. We don't but, even understand it as it is. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully, somebody understands. I don't know. Anyways, thirty BC, long, long time ago. So since then, nobody has been able to find where their tomb is. Hmm. Um. Yeah, that's and, crazy. Yeah, and Cleopatra made sure that they were hidden from the Romans and the Romans' descendants forever. So there's, like, a reason why they're hidden. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and she must have did a good job, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and people say that this discovery could rewrite history. It's, like, a once-in-a-century event. 
So that's yeah, crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, because I mean it it won't just be like their their bodies. It'll be like other items, artifacts too. Yeah, that we so, haven't ever seen. And like mm-hmm. Lord who knows what's buried with them. Mm-hmm. Cleopatra, guys, we don't even know how we made the pyramids. Yeah, so... Like, she could have some answers up in there. Who knows? Mm-hmm. They would probably never let us have them, though. <laughs> Greedy. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so let's take it back. So, Cleopatra, she was the queen of the um, Ptol- Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt um, from 51 BC to 30 BC. So... Yeah, backwards, like I was saying. Backwards, yes. Um, and I didn't realize that um, she was not Egyptian. She, like, her family that was ruling were the, um, it was like the, Tolo- the Ptolemies, mm-hmm. and they were Macedonian. And they yeah. sort of, like, took over the area. And then, like, she was the last queen in that you know yeah this line of descendants yeah that it really is wild like they really just they said hi this is ours now yeah basically (laughs) um and she was the last active ruler of egypt as well wow okay how do i i feel like i did not know that yeah i didn't realize that either um and she was also she was considered the human incarnation incarnation of the goddess isis um and cleopatra's native language was greek but she was the only um of the ptolemaic rulers to learn the egyptian language which is really cool that is cool um i i feel like that shows that she like cared about her people the people yeah no i think that definitely does show that yeah and like I guess her her family, like all of the people before her, like they didn't even bother to learn it. That's really messed up. Like that's yeah. really messed up. Also, can I just say, like, how pretty of a name is Cleopatra? I know that's it like is. the prettiest name. Um, and she was super smart. She even studied at the Library of Alexandria. Mm-hmm. I knew that was coming. Yes. Wild. <laughs> like, what if she has like a book, or like the location of where that is? Yeah. Mm. Hmm. The possibilities are endless. Could have some stuff down there. Um, And she was also said to have, like, an irresistible charm. Like, a great personality. Um, And in the beginning of her rule, she was actually married to her brother. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. Which is, I guess, just how they did things. Like, looking at their family tree... It's, like, all connected. <laughs> I think that's how all royal families do it, so they can keep it, like, in the family. And I know that's, like, that's... Mm. I don't think, like, more recent days, they do, like, distant relatives. <laughs> okay, that stuff, doesn't make right? it better, though. <laughs> or, like, families that are also royal, but not the same family. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, they've... That's definitely been a thing, mm-hmm. right? Definitely. Um, Weird. Which is, yeah, weird and also, like, means that they probably have, like, some sort of genetic Mm. stuff going on. Definitely. Most definitely. Not good. Um, But, anyways, her and her brother, they ruled together as king and queen for a little while. Um, But she wanted the throne to herself. As she should. (laughs) So she managed to become friendly with Julius Caesar, who was the Roman emperor. And they overthrew her brother together. Good. (laughs) Yeah. So Cleopatra, she um, got together with Caesar and they actually had a child together. Oh, um, wow. Caesarian in 47 BC. Oh, I did not know that either. Like, what? Yeah. She had a baby with Julius Caesar? Yeah. (laughs) Like, that's some tea. I knew that Caesar was, like, obsessed with her. That's really some tea. Yeah. And also the fact that it was cesarean. Yeah, I was going to say, is that... Cesarean C-section. Like, is... Yeah, that is what it's called. I was going to say, like, is he the reason? (laughs) I don't know. Wait, I think it's just because Caesar is his name. Now that I think about it. Like, cesarean. Like, I think he was just, like, renaming it. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, totally. But that I just sense. don't know if that. It, where I, that comes I feel into like play. it definitely does not correlate. I feel like C sections were like only made like very recently. Right, because like she would have died from that, right? Oh, for sure, she would have died from that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, But anyways, she had a son with him. um, And then, unfortunately, three years later, Julius Caesar was assassinated. Mm. Rip. Rip Julius. So, Mark Antony steps into the scene. Mm. I love that name, too. Just sounds sexy. (laughs) It is. It is a good name, (laughs) honestly. Um, So, he's another Roman ruler who, I guess, you know, was... Sort of taking the place after Caesar was assassinated, he stepped up um, and Cleopatra um, went to go meet him. Oh, okay. And do you know, you want to know what she did? She really, she went to go meet Mark Antony dressed as Aphrodite. (sighs) Okay. She's giving me like goddess energy. So like, I kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, she is said to be, like, an incarnation of a goddess. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's what all royalty was back then, I think. They, like, you know, they say they had, like, divine... Energy. Yes. uh, Like, they are the actual gods. Yeah. Like, that's what people believed. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe they were. And maybe Um, they were. So, anyways, she went to meet him dressed as Aphrodite, who is the Greek goddess of love which I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and she rode in on a golden boat with purple sails and wow. silver oars. That is honestly such goals. Such a power move, especially since purple was like the hardest yeah, dye color to come to get. by. Yes. She said, I am rich and I am coming for you, Mark Anthony, yes, my exactly. man. Mm-hmm. So this lavish entrance really paid off because she was, she wooed Mark Anthony. Of course and she did. Yes, and she was able to keep Egypt independent from the Roman Empire. Love that. Because, like, you know, at that time, the um, Roman Empire was sort of trying to conquer everything around it. And while Caesar was around, you know, she had him wrapped around her finger. Mm-hmm. And now she's like, okay, well, now I got to get this guy. Mm-hmm. She so said, I want it, she I did. got it. Exactly. Ariana Grande. PSA, mm-hmm. ladies, shoot your shot. Maybe you'll save your whole country. Who knows? Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yeah, she was able to save her country and she snatched up Mark Antony and they, like, were together. They mm-hmm. got married, I guess. I don't, see, I don't know. Did they get married back then? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I think they were married. <clears throat> um. So, yeah, this is, I guess, her third husband. <laughs> so, no. Wow. Um, so, together, um, they were Isis and um, Osiris. Oh. So, those are, that's the god yeah. and goddess mm-hmm. that, I guess, they're a god and goddess that are married. So, they're the real life in- incarnations of them. Wow. Um, and... Cleopatra assigned kingdoms to all of her children. Oh, I see. I forgot to mention they had three children together. Okay. I was like, wait, kids. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So they had three children together. And so now she has four kids, but they had three together. Yeah. And she assigned kingdoms to all of her children to to try and like expand the empire of Egypt. So she was really doing yeah, she was really doing that really work, doing putting in the work. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so now we get into into the drama. So, Mark Antony, he ended up dying in Cleopatra's arms. Oh, how yes. sad! Very sad. So, he had act. He actually thought that she had already died, so he stabbed himself. Oh. Okay, and then, Romeo and Juliet. Exactly. Um, that's what I was going to say. But she, um, she f- like, walked in or something, and, or he was like, wait, she's still alive, and then died in her arms. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty sad. Um, 
And then it said that she poisoned herself. Okay, literally out of Romeo grief. and Juliet. Yeah. See, they also say like that she had a snake bite her, like made a snake bite yeah, her. Yeah, I've heard so that then before. She died, but like all the things that I was reading was saying like the more, um, the more likely thing is that she just poisoned herself. Mm-hmm. Didn't it wasn't like a snake or anything. Yeah. Um, but that is more dramatic. So, very, I mean, I very, know. very much so dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she was around 40 years old at that time. Wow, that is so sad. Yeah, it is. Um, so yeah, like I, like we were saying before, like, Romeo and Juliet, definitely. 100, like, literally, is that where he got the story from? That's what I'm thinking, like, probably. Right? Like, wow. <laughs> that is wild. Like, that's literally... I mean, it's the exact story. It, yeah. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, they are gone, right? Um, mm-hmm. And after after their death, Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire. No. Unfortunately. She worked so hard. Yeah. Um, and Roman propaganda circled around about her, actually. Of course it did. Which is not fun um octavian who would be the roman empire augustus yeah um he's the one who like spread around this info so he was basically he was like mark antony's rival too and she he sort of said to everybody that cleopatra was a beautiful scheming temptress oh and that she was like um basically just calling her like a slut (laughs) wow so rude yeah um and nothing about how smart she was how like how she's doing in all of this yeah like clearly it worked yeah sir exactly and honestly even to today like i think that still you know holds holds out with like the stereotypes of what you think of cleopatra yeah definitely right because like but she was a girl boss yeah she was she was a girl boss. Um, she knew what she was doing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and she got it done, too, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so, so yeah, like, uh, after all this stuff that she did, her whole reputation was, like, ruined, basically. <sighs> That's so messed up. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so, her and Mark Antony were buried... Um, in an undisclosed location somewhere um, that nobody has ever seemed to find. Okay, so do we know who buried them? Um, I mean, I'm guessing her people. I don't know. Because uh, I'm just like, I don't know what I was thinking, like that she like, hid their bodies somehow herself. <laughs> um, obviously, she can't do that when she's dead. So, like, Wow. Well, I guess she, she probably like you know entrusted it to oh well for sure for some people sure. and then else. they um, you know they kept it a secret just because they didn't want the new um, this new Roman guy to like come in and like yeah do something to it you know mm-hmm. so it worked <laughs> yeah it did it really did mm-hmm. so it has been a mystery ever since. Until this this woman, Kathleen Martinez, um, she, she's been looking for her. So, um, Kathleen Martinez, she was a lawyer turned archaeologist. So interesting. Another, another girl boss. <laughs> That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder why. But, I mean, also, I don't have to wonder, because, like, archaeology is the coolest thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, ever. Yeah. Um, so, she was an archaeologist at the University of Santo Domingo, and she has been searching for the lost tomb of Cleopatra and Mark Antony for nearly 20 years, since wow. 2005. Wow. So. Wow. So That's yes. dedication. Mm-hmm. So, um, Kathleen, she was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, and 
she actually, um, her family's library was the largest private book collection in the Caribbean, which Dang, is pretty okay. cool. <laughs> okay. Um, just random fun fact. Uh, but she is super smart. Like she skipped grades. She was skilled in piano, chess, swimming, and martial arts. Okay. She's really a girl boss. I was going to say three for three on girl bosses today. <laughs> Exactly. Um, And she also graduated law school at 19. Okay. Say less. Law school? Yeah. Girl, I didn't even barely finish high school. (laughs) By 19. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, And she she built her own legal firm. Oh, okay. Say less. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Wait, what's her name again? Kathleen Kathleen. Martinez. My girl Kathleen. Killing the game. Exactly. Um... And she has a master's in finance and a master's in archaeology. Wow. So, um, and she has, like, also talked about why Cleopatra still matters today. Um, aside from her just being a girl boss. Uh-huh. <laughs> you yeah, <know? laughs> of course. Um, the queen herself. Um, just like Kathleen. They're both, you know, powerful women. Mm-hmm. But, um... Cleopatra, she, the calendar that we use today can be traced back to her. And most people, like, people talk about how it can be traced back to Caesar. But Cleopatra really had a big impact on it, too. What? No way. Mm-hmm. Um, it also, she also set a precedent for powerful women, of course. She sure did. Shout out. Um, every time we see a professional woman, we should think of her. Because she was, like... She was the numero uno. Yes, she was the professional. Um, <laughs> and, of course, you know, her image was tainted by Octavian. Um, man, so... Octavian is... <laughs> I picture him as the little man from the Night at the Museum. If you know, you know. Yes. And I just want to step on him. <laughs> <laughs> was that his name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, because it's supposed to be, like, was... actually him. Yes. Oh, my God. Like, Yeah. Yes, that he was like leading all the little Roman people, and like uh-huh. o- Owen Wilson was like the cowboy, or yes. I don't remember his name in the movie, but yeah, I don't know his name either. Guys, if you haven't seen that at the museum, please go watch it. Yeah, old recommendation, they're, they're but a characters. solid one. Um. Okay, so her image was tainted by Octavian, so uncovering her tomb would like it would uncover more about who she really was. Totally, you know? totally. So that'd be really cool. So, you know, after all this, almost 20 years of searching, there has been a breakthrough in the search recently. I'm so excited to hear about this breakthrough. hmm So, they uncovered a 1,305-meter tunnel that is 13 meters underground. Stop it right now. Where? I mean, in, in Egypt. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That, I mean, obviously. But, like, okay. And have they went yes. down there? Um, see, I don't know. I don't know about, like, how, if they've... I think they're they're starting to excavate it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they know that it contains a huge religious center with three sanctuaries. What? Um, a sacred lake. What? <laughs> I know. An underground sacred, sacred lake. Are we kidding? Um, more than 1,500 objects, busts, statues, golden pieces. Stop. Um, a huge collection of coins portraying Alexander the Great, Queen Cleopatra, and the Ptolemies. I'm shook right now. If y'all could see my, my mouth is open, <laughs> jaws on the floor. Yeah. So. So, yeah. Um, so, the reason, like, they have not found Cleopatra yet. But the temple connected to all of this is a temple to um, Osiris. Stop it So right now. that was like Mark Antony was said to be the human incarnation of They're him. definitely down there. Yeah. So that's why they think it's there. Because, you know, this is his that's temple. Him. So. Wow. Wow. That is so crazy. You said there's like 15,000 or 100 documents or something. Uh, 1,500 objects. Objects? Okay. Guys, that's a lot of objects. Like, <laughs> yes, I really feel like is. something 
At least one thing in there might be from the Library of Alexandria. Oh, I know. Yeah, it could be. That's so crazy. This is so exciting. I know. Did you say like, what I'm, year this was when they discovered times. this? Um, well, recently. I That's mean, crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they've been like, um, yeah, they've been like excavating and stuff, and they're gonna start, um, just trying to find her. <laughs> That's great. So. Can I can I join the mission, guys? I would love to be a part of that. <laughs> Truly. I mean, look, I have a degree. I can there. do it. <laughs> you said you want to leave the country this year. Yeah, so. right. I I go and I just never come back. I just stay <laughs> in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Listen, that's but a yeah. possibility. So it's just it's just craziness. I that's so exciting because mm-hmm. when I mean, genuinely, I fully believe they're gonna find them in there. And that's going to be huge. Like we were, you said, it's going to be like very, very huge. Like whenever they do find them. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's going to happen like any day now. Like 2023 yeah. predictions. They're going to find cool. Cleopatra. I know. I know. It's really exciting. That's why I said it's like kind of a mystery, but it's kind of almost solved. Like it's almost she's, solved. She's probably there. Guys, she's No, she's there. Why else mm-hmm. would they? A whole tunnel. How long did you say it was? Like 13... Something. Um. Yeah, it was something like that. That's I like get my notes, but. guys. That's so crazy. I'm so genuinely sure was I wasn't ready. Thirteen meters underground, 13 meters. but it was thirteen thousand or thirteen hundred and five meters. Ooh, tunnel. All right. So listen, I'm not good at meters to yards or whatever. But it's very big. <laughs> but like that's big. That's, That's big. three times the amount would be in. Feet. Yeah, so thirteen times three. It's a lot. Don't know how. To, don't know what it <laughs> yeah. is. It's oh. around sixty. It's in the fifties. Um, so like that's yeah. like to me that sounds like a little burial ground temple underground mm-hmm. that somebody really wanted to keep hidden. Probably their bodies. That's yeah. I am so sure. See, shook. but also like I, you know, I don't know how to feel about it sometimes because it's just like it is really cool to like be able to excavate this stuff but also like should we keep should them we? buried you know right okay because that also i was gonna ask that question because guys i know we've seen all the movies like where we go and we <laughs> touch these people's ancient burial grounds and like mm-hmm. there's booby traps there's like bad things like, well, could, yeah. like curses even are See, possibilities it's all that, but also just like out of respect of course of course also out of respect but like, you're right. I didn't really. But I feel like people don't care about the respect because they're yeah. like, it's for science, which I understand that. I understand both sides. Yeah, it's for history. It's yeah. for science. So, like, it's... I feel like people really don't care about respect. <laughs> I do. I think that they should probably leave it alone. But I also think that they should probably leave it alone because, like, th- there might be some bad juju up in there. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. genuinely. See, I just hope that they don't um, take it for a museum. Like, leave it there, um, you know? Because I know... You know they're going to take it to a museum. Yeah. They're <laughs> going to take at least some of the stuff in there to museums. And I just don't like that. Because it's like... I, I agree. It's, they I agree. they were buried with all of that for a reason. And clearly and, they wanted it to be underground where nobody could find it for all this time. So, like, yeah. it kind of feels very wrong to take it out. But mm-hmm. honestly, we don't know what they'll do. Maybe Maybe they'll leave it there. Yeah. I don't think that they will, but... See, but I am, I'm just excited, though, because I do want to know about the history and, like, Same. see if we learn anything else. Same, like, yeah, like, I want a part two in the future. Yeah. That would I, be amazing. I like, <laughs> yeah. I like that part of it. I don't know. It's, it's just hard. hard. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Because then at the same time, like, do they care? They're dead. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, back then, though, they They did. They, they did definitely care. did. They yeah. cared about their afterlife because. You're right. You know, they were preserved a certain way, so then... No, you're definitely right. Yeah. Ooh, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. We'll see what they do. At least that's not our decision, because I, I don't want to be making that decision. That's true. That's <laughs> oh. true. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I love that story. I learned yeah. a lot of new things I did not know. I know. I know. It's crazy. Too. It's really crazy. Well, um, what's funny is that, you know, normally we get on here, we got some... 
some commonalities between our stories. And this week we definitely have a commonality. Um, but in different ways. So you'll see what I mean here shortly. Um, today for you, I have the legend of the candy lady. Da -da -da. Oh. Hmm. So I did cover like the story of the candy man. And no, I didn't look up what episode it is. But like y'all can find it. It's one of them. Um, but this actually has nothing to do with the candy man. The, so the candy man and the candy lady, completely separate stories. So, okay. You know, just had to put that out there to begin with. Um, so this legend is actually most well-known. Um, it's like the most well-known urban legend in Texas. Oh, okay. United States. Which, honestly, I had never even heard of it. But apparently it's extremely well-known if you're around Texas down there so <laughs> that was my attempt at a texas accent um, yeah that was good sorry. that was great thanks <laughs> so okay the legend this legend centers around a woman named clara crane which to me just sounds like such a legend name like oh good old clara crane it does you know like i don't know yeah it seems made up <laughs> it does but no this woman really did exist so and that was her name so she was real um, so specifically, this tale takes place in a place called Terrell, Texas. Um, but as I said, the story is like well known throughout the entire state. So let's just jump right on into it. How about we? Um, so I'm going to first start out with kind of like a deep dive like into Clara Crane's life to kind of get to know who she was a little bit. So she was born in Terrell, Texas in 1891. So, you know. Little, little ways back. Mm -hmm. And actually, she was forcefully married to an old, like a really old man when she was a teenager. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. Which is horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, So after being married to him for like only a really short period of time, she had a child named Marcella. Okay. Um, Which I'm like... I just have so many questions, but, like, I just feel so bad for her. Poor little Clara Crane. Yeah. So, you know, but she loved her. She loved her kid. She loved Marcella so much. Um, and she was a really good mom to her. Yeah. Even I though mean, she was least, still, like, a teenager herself. Yeah. See, like, that's good at least that, you know, she had some sort of brightness. For sure. For, for sure. The, from this dark situation. For sure. Um, however, it's not going to last. Oh, no. Because tragically... Marcella died when she was only five years old. No. Now, as if it could really even get worse, it will. Um, Clara um, kind of believed that her husband might have had something to do with her daughter's death. Oh, oh no. Um, yeah, and she actually like fully believed that he was the reason why it happened. So... Um, while we don't know, like, the exact cause of death for Marcella, um, the medical examiner's report, um, basically they came out and said that she, it was an, she died in an accident out in their fields. So, like, I'm pretty sure they had, like, corn fields or some kind of field of some kind of something, um, because okay. they live on a farm. And, like, her and her dad, the old man, um, were just, like, out in the field, and doing who knows what like probably like i imagine like on some kind of like a tractor or something like getting farm tools but honestly we don't know what happened all we know is that they were out in this field and her husband clara crane's husband and marcella's dad had apparently been drinking like all morning and was like extremely extremely drunk mm -hmm. and like all of a sudden she marcella was dead in the field oh, no. So, um, okay. Well, it sounds like they did it. Yeah. Like, and it probably wasn't on purpose. Like, we don't know if it was, but like, so, could they ruled yeah. it an accident? So he probably didn't do it on purpose, but still like, you know, kind of, yeah, kind of is at fault, sadly. Um, so obviously Clara Crane is riddled with guilt. Like Marcella was like the only joy in her whole life. Like, she is married to this old, disgusting man who, like, killed her daughter. And, like, now she just has nobody. Um, so, she basically, like, mourns for two years. Two whole years. She doesn't really do anything. And after two... No. Sorry. <laughs> I'm backing it up. 
um, on the second anniversary of Marcella's death, um, Clara decided that it was time she'd get revenge for her daughter. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun is right. So, apparently her husband's, like, favorite little candy was these little caramels, okay? These little special caramels that she would make. Okay. So, Clara decided to poison the caramels. Um, <laughs> of course. Okay. And the candy lady. Like the candy lady. Yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, when he got home that day, she gave him the caramels. He was like, mm, my favorite. Ate the whole bowl. Died. I love that impression. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> my favorite. My favorite. <laughs> I imagine him just being like an old Texas man. Yeah. Um, I can I can picture it. So yeah. he ate the whole thing. He, he ate the whole, he ate the whole bowl, baby. And yeah. then, boom. Hour later, the man was no more. So this story, it, obviously the town knew about it immediately. Like, it it spread. The story spread throughout the whole country. Um, and after, and Clara did like, con- she didn't run, run, but like, she was like, mm, you know, I might've messed up here. Like, you know, um, so she didn't run, but she was definitely trying to like hide, stay low key. Okay. Um, but only two days after, um, her husband was killed, she was arrested and an investigation was underway. <laughs> so, um, in court, in the trial, Clara did, in fact, say she did the murder. She was like, yep, I killed him. Yep. But. <laughs> she just admitted it. <laughs> but she said that she was completely unconscious during the murder. Why? Um, so she was basically like, I went, I was in a blind rage. And I'm like, girl, this was premeditated. You made the caramels. But you know what? This is a different time Um, back then. So um, she basically like pled guilty by reason of insanity like that's what we use today and that wasn't a thing at the time but that's what she did and she was sent to north texas lunatic asylum um to Jeez. serve her time yep and today actually that asylum still like exists and it's it's known as terrell state hospital today so that's crazy that is still like up and up and going um so yeah, moving into Clara's time in the asylum, um, she apparently was, like, one of the best patients there. She, like, never disturbed anybody. Um, she was, like, undergoing treatment and complied easily, like, with whatever they wanted, like, whatever kind of treatment they wanted. And Okay, it's, it's probably because there was nothing wrong with her. Yeah, there was nothing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with her. And she's just like, and I'm like, going to just I do this because I don't want to be in real jail. Exactly. Ex- I mean, she literally had no choice. Like, yeah. And I'm not trying to be like, I, I support her decision to murder. But like, I would probably feel the same way if I was in her shoes. Yeah. And this is some old creepy old, man. Old man that she was forced to marry. And then she, yeah. she's, he's going to take away the one thing that she loves. Like, I would feel the same way. So honestly, I don't blame Clara. But, you know, she was good. She was chilling. She was like, I'm chilling. You know, she was like, I know I've got to serve my time. So I'll uh-huh. just serve it in this like ward. You know, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, she was just she was good. Um, all of the workers, like they all said, like none of them ever had a problem with her, which is amazing. Um, but there was one thing, <laughs> one thing that little Clara, Miss Clara did that scared everyone, workers and patients, every doctors, everybody. Um, she was like, let me let me get these ingredients. I want to make my special candy. <laughs> Surprisingly, we're not to the candy yet. Oh, okay. okay. Um, man, but that would have been good, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, actually, even worse than the candy. Um, she made a doll out of her. Oh. She, like, tore up her bed sheet uh, from her bed and made this little doll and named her Marcella after her daughter, which is really sad. Hmm. Um, so... You know, this doll, obviously, after, I mean, pretty much immediately when she made it, it became extremely important to her, and Clara actually started talking to the doll, and then that kind of grew into just, like, treating the doll, like, as if it was her baby, and then she would sing it lullabies every night, and then she kind of got into the mindset where she believed it actually was her daughter, and people were, like, really creeped out by this, because they were, like, first of all, it, like, is it her daughter? We don't know. Like, (laughs) is she crazy? Who knows? Um, so, yeah, um, and also every doctor and nurse and, like, all the guards and stuff in the facility, they all knew about the doll, and, like, technically she wasn't supposed to have it, but since everybody knew, like, the situation of what had happened, they let her keep it. Well. 
So okay, <laughs> she just was chilling with her doll, which I think is honestly cute. Like the doll, she wasn't hurting anybody. Like this girl yeah. was just like very much so grieving. Like her life is horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, I would I personally would let her keep the doll too. Yeah, um, no, definitely. Like I don't know why. Why would she not be allowed to have it? Well, just like at a, like to use it as like a weapon is what normally people oh. like would think to hurt like themselves or other people or like you know. Mm-hmm. You know, just things. Just kind of, like, because when you're in a psychiatric ward like that, like, she still is locked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's still serving time for her crime. So, it's like, you don't get the fun things. But they let her keep it all. So, you know. You know. So, we're going to fast forward a little bit. Three years later. So, she has served three years. And her sentence, I didn't actually write it down, but it was, like, definitely at least 25. Like, it was a long, it was a long time. Okay. (laughs) Um... But so it, but at this point, it had only been three years, okay? And Claire Crane, three years later, is released from the asylum due to overcrowding and her good behavior. Okay. Yep. So um, she was released in 1903, and in 1903, Claire Crane was officially a free woman. Um, so what's crazy is that after she was discharged, nobody ever heard from her again. And nobody actually even knows when or how she died. Like, she co- she completely became a ghost when she left. So, I'm assuming that she just kind of, like, booked it and made a new life for herself. Because that's what honestly what she deserved. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, she <laughs> left. She huh. left. And, and so, that is actually still a mystery to this day. Like, we don't, we still don't know. And what we never will. did you say it um, was? 1903. Okay. See, back back then, it's like it's crazy to me that back then people could just disappear like that. I know. I know. Like today, nobody could. Like it'd be way harder. To it's do ex- that. yeah. It's almost impossible. But you back then, yeah, you could easily do it. Like there was no Google, no Facebook to look up anybody. Mm-mm. Yeah, you just go somewhere that nobody will find you. Exactly. And be like, hi, I'm Easy. Stephanie. <laughs> like, right, and then say, oh yeah, that's my. Just call yourself something else. Exactly. Like, it would, ugh, it's crazy how easy that was. But honestly, glad, because she deserved a new life, you know? Yeah, yeah. She did. So, now that I've told you the real life story of Claire Crane, let's get into the legend of the Candy Lady, okay? So, five years to the day after Claire Crane was released from the asylum, children started going missing in Texas. Okay. And it's weird that it was, like, five days to the anniversary, so just keep that in mind. Um, yeah. so the people who lived like in the area of Terrell, Texas were like obviously very scared for their lives and their children and were trying to find these kids cause they were missing. Um, so oh, I lost my spot. Okay. So when police were investigating like the other kids who had like maybe seen something like at a park and they were, kids were being taken from like multiple different places, not just like one place. Um, so I'll get into that in a minute, but people were being investigated by police, like siblings of people who had gone missing family members. And they would ask like if they had ever seen anybody kind of lurking around watching them. Right. And kids would say that sometimes when they woke up in the morning, they would find a piece of candy placed on their windowsill. Um, no, no, thank you. (laughs) Right. And so, but at first the kids said like, at first, like when it first started happening, like they kind of just thought like it was a nice little surprise from their parents, you know, like, like nobody had gone missing yet. Like it was just like a piece of candy. And that's probably what I would think too. If I just found some candy on my window, be like, oh, somebody left me there for like, left me a little treat. Like on the outside of the window? I, I mean, yeah, but like, no, on the inside of the window. Oh. Inside the room. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's creepy. So, but they're like, yeah, it's my, just my parents. But it would go, and every day they would wake up, there would be candy. So, like, on the third day with the candy, there would also be a note left with the candy this time. And the candy, I mean, not the candy, the note said, quote, from the candy lady. Oh, no. Um, That's not fun. Yeah, so... When kids are coming forward saying this, like, these kids, some of the kids had experienced, like, this candy phenomenon, but had not been taken yet. So, like, maybe, like, she just hadn't got to them yet, you know? She's right. kind of playing the long game. Right. Um, so, obviously, 
once this comes out, like there's a lot more investigations like going on. Um, and what's crazy, this is happening to multiple different counties, like all throughout the city. So that's also Jeez. scary. The candy lady's busy. Right. Very, very packed schedule. Very, very packed. <laughs> um, but once the people in the town started hearing like the story of this candy and like people, kids going missing, they remembered the story of Clara Crane who used candy to kill her husband to get revenge for her baby. So, obviously, the townspeople came to the conclusion that the ghost, maybe maybe the real Claire Crane or the ghost of Claire Crane, depending um, on if she's alive or not, because we don't know if she's alive or not, mm-hmm. um, that she could be the reason for these events going on. Um, and that's how they were able to see, like, it was five year, it was a five-year anniversary of her release as well and they're the townspeople were kind of like she's missing her kid like maybe she wants maybe she wanted another kid and knew she could use candy to lure them in you know i don't know yeah i don't know i would maybe be thinking the same thing if i was a townsperson back then um is it the same kind of candy it is the same kind of candy (gasps) yeah so yeah um, and after about a week of police investigation, after, like, all the all the interviews and stuff with the kids, um, a farmer in the town was digging up on some of his land, on his farm, when he found some teeth. Okay? And when he oh found these teeth, he obviously immediately called the police, and but he noticed, without touching them or anything, that they were very small. So he assumed that they had to be children's teeth. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, obviously the farmer, the townspeople, all this stuff, they're like, let's take all this. Like, they, they were like, they ha- this has to be enough, right? Like, this has to be enough evidence to p- prove that, like, something's going on here. Like, this is where the kids must be being, like, discarded of. I don't know. So, a, like, the families and the farmer kind of all meet up together to discuss mm-hmm. what they found. And then they're like, okay, let's take all this evidence to the sheriff all together, you know? have a big sit down meeting about it because these families are still trying to look for their kids. And now that this farmer is saying that there's teeth, you know, it's getting very serious. Right. So they take a little ride down to the sheriff's office. Um, but when the crew, the squadron got to the station, the sheriff was nowhere to be seen. Okay. And everybody that was working in the station were like, Oh, we don't know. We haven't seen him. Don't know where he is. So they're like, okay, we'll wait. He doesn't come back for the rest of the day. They're like, okay, we'll come tomorrow. Let me just say that this man is completely missing, in action, up and vanished. No one knows where this man is, the sheriff, who was working the case. Okay? Um, okay. Um, Yeah, so the group of people, like, with all the evidence, obviously told other officers that were there. But the other officers were like, well, we need to wait on the main sheriff to return because he's the one handling this case, which is so stupid. Like, these kids are missing. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is urgent. But, um. They're just going to wait for him. Yeah, they were like, like, we need to wait. And do you want to know how long they had to wait? I don't know. They waited two weeks, two whole weeks. And the only, they would have waited longer. But two weeks later, after they had gone in to tell him the story. The sheriff's body was found near a lake, and he oh had God. been brutally beaten and thrown in the bank of the river. And um, what? I'm going to just throw a trigger warning out there for this next part. Maybe just skip a 15 second if you don't want to hear something really gross. Um, but when they found his body, he was found on the side of the river, like I said, with forks stabbed into his eyes. <gasps> no. Yeah, so, like, it wasn't just, like, maybe he killed himself. Like, no, 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 oh no, Oh, my no. God. No, no, no. Like, he, this man was taken out. Um, yeah. That's horrific. Um, horrific. Absolutely horrific. So, just disgusting. I had to, had to add that part. So, um, while, obviously, you know, they get the police out there, the medical examiner, they're taking, you know, doing all the steps they need to do. Um, the medical examiner is doing his exam. And when he's, like, removing the um, the sheriff's clothing, he finds that the sheriff's pockets are absolutely stuffed to the brim with candy. The same candy. No. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So the townspeople came to the conclusion that obviously the candy later, the, not the candy later, no, <laughs> the candy lady was behind the murder of the sheriff and the kids. And that is the legend of the candy lady. And they never found her? No, they never found her. So, you know. She they, just got away with it all. That is But, insane. like, was it her? We have no proof that it was her. No real proof. No, I'm not assuming that it was her, but I'm just saying they never well, found Whoever anybody. it was, yeah, no. They got away with it. And they killed those kids, too. Yeah, they did. I, I almost want to say, like, I don't believe it was... Um, like, I have no idea if it was her. Clara Crane. Clara Crane. I don't know if it was Clara Crane. I don't know either, but, but... like, it's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Like, the motive is there. Yeah. The motive is there. And it's in the same town. why would you want to kill a bunch of kids? Like... Okay, so that kind of leads me... I don't know. I don't know. Wouldn't she want to protect the kids? Like, she's like... Yeah, like, she likes the kids. That's what I was going to say, that my personal theory is that it could have been one of her late husband's family members because i'm pretty sure his family like both of them are from that town so like i'm pretty sure both of their families live in the town and what if one of one of his family members wanted revenge like on her for doing what she did so they like made it look like it was her to like ruin her reputation see see now that i could get behind yeah that's kind of what I think happened. Because I don't, I don't think she would hurt kids. I really, I really don't. She was against that her whole life. But also, yeah. I mean, who knows? I, I don't know. We don't know. We, and we never will know. But huh. I just don't think she would hurt the kids. But that I know. But yeah. That's the legend of the candy lady. And apparently this story is still told to like kids in Texas today to like scare them. And I'm like, scare them of oh my what? Gosh. Like this is horrifying. Like this is real. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like it's real, but also like. What's happening? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't want the candy lady near me. The candy lady nor the candy man. They can all stay away. I don't want yeah, no candy. Like, it's insane that she was not caught and like did she just stop? Did she just yeah, I mean yeah. It ended. It after the sheriff it was ended. I mean like nothing was ever done and like yeah. It was over. So like it's just crazy. It's just a big open ended huh. mystery. But yeah. what I was gonna say was that both of our stories in their own separate weird ways, all had girl bosses in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> and mysteries. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, that's the legend of the candy lady. I thought that story was crazy. When I found out, I was like, mm, that is just wild. It was. Mm-hmm. That's, oh my gosh. It really is. Huh. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know what to think. Me neither. Yeah. I kind of really think it was like her husband's family. Yeah. I really do. But then again, I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. But um, if anybody else has any theories, let us know for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, go check out our Instagram to see pictures from our stories this week. Um, Yes. And also, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you're listening on Spotify, we always post like Q&As or polls or both questions, whatever. Go answer Mm -hmm. them. And if you don't listen on Spotify, I don't know what to tell you. Spotify yeah. is the only cool app we can do cool things on. Yeah. No I'm other app will let you. us do it. So, mm-hmm. sorry if you're using a not fun app. That's yeah. all I got to say sorry. about that. <laughs> um, but. Um, let us know if you want stickers. Oh, yeah. Let us know if you want stickers. Guys, honestly, you want stickers. I promise you. We'll yeah, post a picture of those as well so you can see them. Um, like maybe a story. So be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for that. But really, other than that, I don't think I have anything else for this week. What about you? Yeah, I don't have anything else either, really. Okay, well, then I guess we will see you guys next week. Okay, cue the music.